Hi, this is Patrick Anderson with Mach E Blog, and this is Liv. And we're on our way to test drive a Model Y. And why? Well, yes, we do have an order in for a Mustang Mach E that should be out later this year, early next year. But the biggest competition for the Mach E, of course, is the Model Y. So might as well give it a test drive now while we can. It is a touchless test drive, so hopefully that'll be nice and safe. And we're gonna meet the salesman out in the parking lot and then go for our test drive. So the current car that we're in is the one that we would probably, probably be replacing, and it's a 2011 Subaru WRX. It's decent, it's sporty, doesn't have the room that we want anymore for carrying our bikes and stuff like that. But I think it'll be an interesting comparison to see how we like a brand new high-tech vehicle versus the WRX. And keeping in mind that the Mustang Mach-E will have many of the same features as the Model Y in regards to it's an electric vehicle and it also has a computer, it has some uh, driver assist technology built in. So looking forward to seeing how that all plays out. How's it Cherry Creek? This is Hi, this is Patrick Anderson. I had a 1 p.m. test drive. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'll have a uh, core meet you guys out there. All right, sounds great, thanks. He's just driving through the parking lot to get out of here and it's really disconcerting. I'm gonna take the mask off. Okay. It's really disconcerting how quiet this car is. It's really quiet. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm um, sort of get my feel for things and um, I mean, it feels normal, but it's like, it's just weird that there's no, oh yeah. And it, as soon as I lift my foot off the brake, it definitely slows down. Disconcerting. Oh. <laughs> I didn't ask how we get out of the parking lot. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's a paid parking lot. We don't lot. have a ticket. How do we get out? Uh, I think we just pushed a button and- Theoretically, say, if we're in a test, test Tesla, it. we'd get out. Yeah. Uh, we're doing a Tesla test drive. So, okay, oh, thank you. thank you. <laughs> they just opened it straight away. That's like, <laughs> like a... <laughs> oh no, we're locked in. What do we do? I'm still getting used to the like regen braking and stuff like that, trying to figure this all out. Um, a lot of the features that this vehicle has, the Mach-E will have. So it'll have the regen braking. Of course, it's also electric. It will have some type of, not autopilot, it would be the Ford equivalent of that. Don't know all the details just yet, but it will have a lot of very similar features. Um, the display on the Mach-E, of course, is mounted vertically, but it will have a display directly through the steering wheel. This one isn't as bad as I thought. I thought having a display off to the side with my speed would be a bit odd, but it, it's not too bad. It's not too far over, but I still think I am going to prefer the Mach-E having the display right in front. How's it feel? So far, it feels normal. Um, sitting up very high compared to my WRX, of course. Um, it's just sort of like test driving a, or getting into a rental car, just getting used to the way everything is. Um, of course, having the big display here is interesting. I'm like, what should I be looking at? We got a cyclist coming up here. I'm sort of curious if it's going to see the cyclist, but I want to let him go. It does not see him. Oh, interesting. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I said I wasn't going to do that. I said I wasn't going to laugh, but it's hard not to. Yeah. That's how nice to react to. Cause like we watched some YouTube videos before doing this and it was like, okay, we're not going to be those people who get in and I'm like, whoa, wow. So I'm not being overdramatic. That is my nature. One of the things that many people have mentioned is the visibility out the rear window. It literally looks like I'm looking out a portal in the rear view mirror. It, the visibility is extremely limited, which is disappointing. It's very smooth. I know that this is quite a bumpy street. And now it's doing the autopilot. 
my goodness. Now, a lot of people will take their hands off because it, you can sort of do that, but you're not supposed to. So I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and it's maintaining the speed, but it's freaking me out because we, we got to cut stop. And I'm... Did you do that? Yeah, I'm not trusting it yet. The Maki will have, like I said, something very similar. I think once I get used to it, it'll be great for commuting back and forth to work. But for now, I'll wait till we get out to a quieter area before I experiment with that and trust my life to it or a $60,000 car. Actually, this is the performance, so it's worth even a bit more than that. So we're sitting at an intersection so you can see the cars going by on both sides. And then now it's my turn. So it's still very easy to control the acceleration to feel normal. Jesus. Holy crap. Was that pedal to the metal? Yeah, finally. Did you? Yeah. We're like, we have a little bit of straight road. I, I mean, like, okay, so there's this, road, this place called Lakeside in Colorado. Jeez. And it's really old school. And there's this one roller coaster that's super rickety and like you just, it, you barely hooked in. You truly are. So the feeling when you go over a bump in that roller coaster, like you might not be in your seat when you come back down. Like that's the same feeling that I just got when he pedaled to the metal on that little bit of straight, straight road. <laughs> right? I'd say that's accurate. Yeah, it's you? pretty. <laughs> like I might've lifted out of my chair, <sighs> but not necessarily nice. Like. So we're in park, but I do have to say that that's not intuitively located when the P is covered by the steering wheel and you just press that little yeah, button there. Button. But it is yeah. a, you learn it once and you're good to go. True. Um, getting out is interesting. You don't pull, you just push a button and then you open the door. Again, it's a learn it once and you're good. So let's take a look at the outside. So this is why we want to upgrade to an SUV over my WRX is all of the storage space. That's pretty huge. I don't know how much storage space the Maki is going to have underneath the back, but this looks pretty darn big. So to Whoa. that one flopped. <laughs> now let's flop this one. <laughs> that was weird. So let's see how long this thing actually is. I'm 5'6", so luckily I'm short. Yeah, I totally fit. Like, I could totally sleep back here. Is it comfortable? No, it's it's hard, but you can get a, a car mattress and you'd be set. Car camping. I um, like it. Yeah, I could actually scoot up a little bit. And there's the glass roof. Oh my God, why do we go to gym? We'll just do this instead. <laughs> okay, race, that's it. <laughs> wow. And I'm coming from a manual transmission. So having the gear shift up here feels a bit odd as well. In the Mach-E, the gear shift will be a physical knob that's down here. One of the differences between the Mach-E and the Model Y is that the Model Y and the Teslas in general are very simplistic in their controls and they have very few knobs. The Mustang Mach-E sort of balances the two. I'm gonna try the turning radius. We'll see how this works. Not bad for an SUV. And really, I think it feels like about as much as my WRX, so that's not bad at all. Now, one of the things I wanted to test is how does this thing handle? We're gonna to try to take a couple of roundabouts if I can. And just, now, the last time I took a test drive through here, it was in a whoop, Mazda Miata. And that thing really liked the curves. And to be honest, for an SUV, this is not far off from something like that. <laughs> oh my God.
You just had 51 all of a sudden. And then we're back down to 17. Okay, so the first thing I always do is I gotta check that I've got good clearance here because I gotta be able to get to the brake easily. So I'm way too close here. Maybe a little more forward. So we hit car. And then driving and... That's fine, acceleration chill. chill. Okay, is it still filming? And that's should be a little bit more what we're used to. Cool. So then we click on the X. And if I was driving properly, I'd adjust the mirrors more, but. So you all the way down. There you go. Now it's okay. in drive. And it's weird. You feel the brake respond. Yeah. It like pushes up against your foot. Oh, that's much nicer. The, the steering wheel, uh, isn't it small? It feels very small. It does. It's quite nice. Cause like, I guess I'm, Often a one-handed driver, and it feels like you could do that really easily. How does it like? How does it suit me? You look comfortable. Yeah, I, I feel yeah. pretty comfortable. And, and that's the thing. Like her car is a 1998 Rav4. I have a 2011 WRX. Neither one is built for comfort. Mm -hmm. um, so this will be a huge upgrade. Mm -hmm. whether it's a Model Y or we go with the Mach-E Premium. So it's going to be a huge jump in what we're used to, no matter what. And, you know, if we want something like a Ford Escape or a new uh, RAV4, it would also probably feel pretty darn nice. Tap to put it in park. Think. Good to go. I feel the accelerator and the brake are more. Cool. That was fine. Even though this display is something I've never really experienced, so far it feels very intuitive. I mean, I haven't played around with like the music and stuff like that, but for the function of the car, it seems pretty easy to figure things out. All right, let's go. Driving mode. Weird. Now, one of the things that I do not like about this, and I'll probably do a video talking about this a little bit more, is it has the Tesla system built in. It's great, everybody loves it, but you can't use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And I have an Android phone, I live on Android stuff, and whether it's better or worse isn't the issue for me. It's the fact that it's just not an option. They, they do not allow Android Auto or Apple CarPlay and it's frustrating. To me, it's you pay $60,000 for a car, you should be able to use what system you want. And I don't understand why they don't allow that. I understand that this is a great system and they want you to stay in this system, but it should be my choice. So the gray steering wheel that pops up is let me know that autopilot slash self steer or auto steer or whatever it's called is available. And it's actually, pops up quite a bit. So that means this thing is ready to steer on its own on a lot of these roads. And to engage, it's literally just tap and that's cruise control. And now it's maintaining my speed and steering. And seems to be pretty good. We have a stoplight coming up. Let's see what it's gonna do. Actually, I need to make a turn up here, so. And it flashed blue and told me to apply some force to the steering wheel. It's actually changing lanes on its own. Oh, oh my and it sees the red light. It started slowing down, but I went ahead and took over. I'm still not trusting it. It's not because it's not good. It's just, I'm not used to it. I wouldn't necessarily use it as like, oh, I can do other things or I don't have to worry about traffic, but I, I could, okay. yeah, I could see engaging it and it would make it sort of nice that I wouldn't have to worry about, like if we are in stop and go, there's always that bit of time where you glance down or something like that and you, you look back up and there's like a car right in front of you. I've never rear-ended anybody, but it always worries me. So I think I would sort of use it like that. It wouldn't be to um, just let it do all the thinking for me. It would just sort of be like a backup to me. I think the way that most people look at the 
autopilot is that you are a backup to the autopilot. I think I would look at the autopilot as like, it's a backup to me. One of the things that I don't like about the Model Y is like, I can't see the front of the car at all. It slopes down so much. It's like there's the windshield and then that's it. With the Mach-E, I have a feeling that'll be different. I did sit in a Mach-E at the LA Auto Show, but I was so excited by the new car. It only got like a couple of minutes in it that I don't really remember the details that much. One thing I am looking forward to in the Mach-E that I want to check out, I don't normally care too much about the audio system in a car. It's like, as long as I can hear the radio, it's fine. It's I'm not that big on it, but the audio system on the Mach-E Premium is very nice and it also looks very nice. It's like a, a sound bar that goes across the whole dash and I think it just looks really nice. The fake wood in such a high-tech car is a little off-putting to me. Like I, I would have rather a carbon fiber look or some other high-tech looking material. The, the wood just looks out of place if you ask me. So we're getting ready to turn in the Model Y. I'm have to admit like i love all the features i think it's a pretty great car will i change my order from a mach e to a uh, tesla model y definitely not um, i still think the model y is a bland looking vehicle i think the mach e looks way better i also like the fact that there are a ton of ford dealers so if you have any issues Wherever you go in the country, there's probably a, a EV certified Ford dealer that's gonna be near you. I like the, the quality that I've experienced personally with Fords in previous vehicles that I've purchased. The Model Y and Tesla in general has had too many quality control issues that concern me and even found one on, on this vehicle. So definitely still sold on the Mach-E and can't wait to test drive it. That'll be the final deciding factor is like, once we get behind the wheels, see if it fits what we like. Well, that's right. it, that's done. Now he's gonna call Tesla? Yes. Yeah. It's parked. That was really fun. Tesla Terry Creek, this is Keaton. Hi, this is Patrick Anderson. I'm just returning the Model Y that I test drove. Okay, cool. Did you, uh, did you, did we come out to you? You didn't want to come into the mall? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we're, we're outside, okay. um, right across from where I pulled it out of the, the, the space. Okay, perfect. Um, we'll be out there in just a second to get you checked out. All right. Thanks so much. Well, that's it for my Tesla Model Y test drive video. It's actually been a couple of days, so I thought I would add a couple more comments and post thoughts. So I just wanted to comment on the touchless test drive. That was very simple to set up. I just went onto the website, requested a time slot. Someone emailed me within a day and asked for a uh, photocopy of my driver's license, proof of insurance, and had to sign a waiver. Once that was done, exchanged a couple of emails just to confirm details and to let them know I did not want to go into the mall to visit the actual Tesla store. I just wanted to meet at the car and do my test drive from there. The salesperson came out when I called them was wearing a mask, um, gave me just a couple of brief pointers on the vehicle, and then we took off. And when we returned the vehicle, it was very simple as well. No pressure, really. It was just a, a matter, a simple question of like, am I considering buying a new vehicle immediately or sometime down the road? I specified that it would probably be about February of next year. Of course, that's when I hoped to get my Mach-E. Didn't tell him that. But he just said he would put that in the database and sent me on my way. So it was pretty simple, pretty easy. If you haven't done it yet, I would go ahead and recommend giving it a try. It's very easy to do right now with the touchless test drives that they're offering. As I said during the test drive, I'm still sold on the Mach-E. Very excited to test drive one of those. From what I hear, they will start offering test drives of the Mach-E in December. I was hoping it would be before that, but you know, it is what it is. And hopefully their system will be just as easy to partake in and get a test drive. Someone made a comment on one of my other videos that I should probably look at some other systems like on the Jaguar I-PACE and check out the Cadillac Super Cruise because that's using a lot of similar technology to what the Ford Mustang Mach-E is going to be using. So I might go ahead and schedule that as well. So what did you all think? Have you driven a Tesla or did any test drives of any other electric vehicles? Are you considering doing that before your Mach-E order comes in? 
Let me know in the comments below and if you have any suggestions for other vehicles you want to see me test drive, make those below and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for sticking around and watching this whole video. I know it was a long one. And if you stuck around this long and haven't subscribed yet, I'd like to ask you to do that now. And if you click on the bell notification, that'll let you know as soon as I post new videos in the future. I also have to mention again, I'm wearing one of my Maki -E shirts. This one is the electric pony shirt. If you want to check them out, they are at makivlog.com slash t-shirts. Not only can you get the designs on t-shirts, you can get it on coffee mugs and a couple other items. So check that out. And thanks again for watching. Stay tuned and I'll have more videos on Maki -E news and information coming up soon.